Hi there. Our team is SIC Desk Management and our app is called GoHive. GoHive is short for Collaborative Hive and that's the name given to us by the client. The Student Innovation Center is located in CSIS at the U of A. It's an innovation space on campus that provides resources for you to book meetings, host events, workshops, and a lot more to support student extracurriculars. We've made an app that centralizes all of the things I just mentioned while adding a sense of community to it. It's available on desktop and it also comes with a mobile view. Let me start by logging in with my U of A account. The app itself is open access, so you can log in with any Gmail account you want. All right, so once we're logged in, we're immediately brought to the bookings page with each room as a column. We can hover over them to see an image and a description. This column is currently disabled because I don't have the correct permissions. So we're gonna go back and look at what happened on April 10th. We have lots of rooms that were booked and notice that this, uh, that the new booking button is grayed out because we're not allowed to book past dates. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, click on an existing item and notice that we can view all the relevant details. All right, now let's go make a new booking in April 15th. Uh, we notice that there's already some bookings here and one of them actually happens to be our own. So let's open that up and we can now edit this straight from this panel. So let's change the title, confirm, perfect. Now we can go make a new booking from scratch with an equipment. So I'll select the laptop column, drag, and then I'll enter in a new title. Let's make this uh, private, and then click submit. And now let's confirm that it actually did get submitted correctly by going to the list view. This by default will show uh, the bookings of the current day. Let's go to my bookings, which shows all the days. Opening this up, we can see that we can edit just like the last page. So now let's go and filter by date by selecting a from and to date in the date picker. And then we can also filter by the equipment type. So I'll select these and then just double check that rooms look the same. They do, they function exactly the same. And now we'll move on to events. So let's talk about events. Here you can get an overview of not only the events taking place in the space, but also events happening elsewhere that the SIC wants to promote. The upcoming events carousel at the top usually fetches events for the next two weeks. Since it's final season, we've modified it to fetch events for the next month. The calendar view is fetching events directly from the client's Google Calendar. As soon as an event is added to the calendar, either manually or automatically from Zoom, Eventbrite and other platforms, the events will show up on this page instantly. We also have a date picker here you can use to view events for a single day. For instance, if I select April 4, I can see the events that took place on that particular day. I can also click on an individual event for an event model to pop up. This model contains the most important information about an event, including the date, time, location, description, and an optional image. Similarly, an event model also pops up for items in the ev upcoming events carousel. As a user, feel like hosting an event that might interest innovators on campus? Simply click on the Submit an Event button. It takes you to a form where the client can collect imp event information from you. This here is the profile page. We can see that our information is loaded in from Google automatically. The user takes down here, allows us to add something fun about ourselves. Add this, and then I'll click enter. Below this is the Student Innovation Center roles, which are given to us by the admin and dictate what we can and can't access. We can't control that, so I'll go add an add an item here. We can add it through the button, or we can do it through the carousel here. So I wanna add a new YouTube link, so I'm gonna go find YouTube in the icon picker. Type in YouTube as my title, put in the description, and I'll link my YouTube account, paste it in there, click submit, and then now we'll see that it adds to the carousel automatically. Let's just double check that the link works. We get redirected automatically, so that's perfect. And then below that, we have a bio that we can uh, adjust to our liking. We can even format it using the rich text editor. We'll click save content. And then we can toggle private and public, but I'm going to keep it public so that I'm visible on the community page, which we'll go to next.
The community page is where you can look up other users of the space and connect with them. By default, the first page only displays a few users, but you can use the pagination feature at the top to check out every other user. You can also simply use the search bar on the top right to look up a specific user. And you can also use the filters provided here to toggle results based on certain sets of users. The filters are essentially what define the user access and user types. These are being fetched dynamically from the Django backend, which means that everything that is displayed on this page is controlled by the admin. Additionally, to check out another user's profile, click on one of these community cards and it'll take you to a single user page. If public, you'll be able to see all of their details, including their name, access type, flare roles, a bio, and portfolio. The portfolio contains items that they want to display publicly. Similarly, if a user has set it to private, their profile view will only show their username and their assigned roles, and not much else. The stat page allows users to see what's been happening at the SIC, so the peak room's booking time shows what's been popular when on and what day. So we can use the day picker to select the day, the room picker to select the room, and we can see that the data dynamically updates, so let's change this back. And we can also change the time scopes. So let's change April to March, data updates, and now let's switch to yearly, and we'll notice that March and April got aggregated together. We can do the same for the room's popularity, which just shows how many hours a room was booked for that time period. We can download both charts as a separate file. And now let's switch to equipment. We can see that the data changes yet again. And we can mouse over the individual pieces of a pie to see the individual statistics. We can check out guitar. And down here is just the aggregate statistics for the SIC. And now we can check out contact. The contact page offers a simple anonymous form that users can fill out to submit comments, suggestions, and questions. This form directly goes to the admin. To wrap things up, let me just sign out. And that's been Kohive. Thank you.